Well, after weeks and weeks of watching, we finally have a bona fide tropical depression out in the Atlantic. And for you fall weather enthusiasts who are looking for some interesting weather to track, well, it's just regular depression for you, I'm afraid, as we work through an unexciting period of September weather. That said, I've got a few things that will at least make it interesting as we take a look at your rest of the week forecast. We're going to look at what the weekend has in store. Of course, we'll check in on those tropics too and then wrap things up with the space weather and geological update. And we'll see how weather savvy you are by checking in on your weather IQ. We've got all that and more straight ahead, but we're coming right at you with the rest of the work week forecast right now. Hello and welcome into the channel on this Wednesday, this hump day. Jason here with you. Can you believe that we are midway through September already? Fall, for all intents and purposes, is here. Pumpkins are in the fields. Pumpkin spice lattes are popping up on every coffee shop menu around the country. And if you walk into any store, you're going to see those Halloween and fall decorations just sitting there smiling at you as soon as you head in the door. Well, it has felt like fall for much of us in the eastern half of the country in the temperature department, but that's coming to an end and fall is going to take a break as we get on over the next week or two, at least in the temperature department, folks. And uh, a couple of things I want to show you here before we get into the forecast. If you think it's been dry, it's not your imagination, particularly in the eastern portion of the country. This is the anomaly map, precipitation anomaly over the last 30 days, and these red colors where we've been really below normal, we're looking at temperatures or actually <laughs> precipitation rather, three inches or more below average. And you can see that here in the Midwest, across the Southern uh, Gulf Coast area, and then back into North Carolina, Eastern sections of the state running as much as six inches below normal over the last 30 days. It has been dry. That is not going to change all that much, unfortunately, but out here in the Central Plains over toward the West where we've needed rain, we've picked up some and made up some ground and we'll continue to do that probably over the next week or so before things potentially change around. Looking at temperatures, folks, as I said, it's been cooler than normal eastern half of the country and basically warmer than normal up here in the Pacific Northwest over the northern tier. And you guys know that it's been really warm there and the brighter colors indicate how much more or above normal it has been. We're talking, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine degrees above normal. And over here in the east, we're talking about five, six, seven degrees below normal in spots. So it's been a, a tale of two halves of the country. Now, over the last 24 hours, Parts of the Mid-Atlantic picked up appreciable rainfall. We're looking at uh, anywhere between half an inch to as much as six or eight inches of rain here just east of Norfolk. So the Bay has gotten a lot of rain and folks in eastern Virginia up into southern uh, Delaware here have picked up quite a bit of rain as well. And that will be, uh, you'll add to those totals over the next 24, 36 hours as the system pulls out. But after that, it's going to dry out. Air quality, unfortunately, not so good from Indianapolis to Cincinnati over to St. Louis, Memphis, Dallas, Houston. Nothing to blow the air particles out, uh, those pollution particles out. And... Uh, rain them out. It's just stagnant air here. It's hazy and uh, the air quality is diminishing and same again in Southern California up into the Pacific Northwest. We see a few spots where there's been wildfire smoke and just be aware of that if you're out. The only real weather hazard that we've got to look at is a slight risk of severe thunderstorms right in here in the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma around southeastern Colorado and then a marginal risk around that. We've got a very localized area where we'll see a jetlet roll in later during peak heating and provide an opportunity for a couple of supercells to develop that could drop a tornado or two. Mainly large hail is the threat. Of course, some wind is possible too, but that will diminish after the sun goes down. We lose the heat of the day. One thing I don't show a lot, but I want to show it today is the jet stream pattern up at 300 millibars. And you can see where the jet is way up here in Canada with these bright colors. You see that? That's where the main jet stream is, and that's where the main storm track is. Although, I've got a little bit of a quasi southern branch of the jet stream, and you can kind of make that out here. We've had some troughing in the east, and that's kept us a little bit cooler than normal, but that's coming to an end as the weather will push east as we go through time. Look at this big upper level low that's been sitting here, kind of as you can see the 
lines kind of kink like that that will bring rain more rain to the Dakotas and into the Midwest over time but it will slowly 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 move east this is Thursday and then Friday into Saturday and look we've still got a reflection that trough up here across the northern tier piece of it's broken off move through the Tennessee Valley so it may enhance some rain out here in this area but uh, it will dampen out with time new trough into the southeast may keep us along the eastern seaboard a little cooler than normal and then energy working into the northwest or the northeast East rather will keep you guys cool as we get on to the weekend and more energy working into the west coast through time will bring some unsettled weather back into the picture there radar through the afternoon really three big areas to watch area number one up here in the plains in the midwest and then down in florida and then over here in the mid-atlantic that will go away and actually you can watch another area down here in california and the desert southwest for uh, rainfall as we go on out in time and that tropical moisture from Tropical Storm Mario gets sucked into the southwest. And see, look what happens. We get on here into Thursday and Friday. Look, same areas kind of getting hit, except for up here. This is gone now, right? That thing, that system moved out. Florida still looking at thunderstorms. Still plenty of rain up here in the Midwest and rain out in California as we get on through Friday, uh, Thursday evening into the overnight hours. Thursday, we get into Friday morning. Still raining up here in parts of the Midwest. Rain moving into the Four Corners region. Florida, you're going to see showers and thunderstorms, particularly South Florida, every day. And then scattered showers through Saturday or Friday afternoon into Saturday overnight hours. Those will diminish down here across the south. But you'll see some scattered showers and thunderstorms each day across the south. And then more weather pushing in with another system into the nation's midsection here. And still raining Saturday morning up here in Minnesota and Wisconsin and in the Chicagoland area, folks. So quite a wet period coming up for some of you all up there. And you can see that reflection and the precipitation totals we're looking at as much as a half an inch in the blue all the way up to three inches maybe even more in red where you have training and then uh, over the next 36 hours here we'll see a couple of more inches potentially in eastern Virginia and then maybe a half an inch to an inch up here or over in southern California the desert southwest across Florida too where you need the rain everybody else needs rain we're not going to get much of it folks what about temperatures how's that going to shake out over the next couple of days well nice and a uh, little bit above normal probably, but still feeling not so bad up here in the Northeast with 70s, even 60s in the Mid-Atlantic with clouds and rain today. Quickly get into the 80s and 90s down here across the Southeast, 90s pushing up into the Ohio Valley, 80s up into the Great Lakes region, 70s and 60s back as you get in toward the Rockies, and then 80s in the um, interior portions of the Northwest, 90s San Joaquin Valley, and hundreds in the desert Southwest tomorrow. Much the same profile, just cooling off a bit here in the Rocky Mountains and the Northern Plains with more rain. Not so bad in the Northwest and in the San Joaquin Valley Desert Southwest. We'll kick you out of those hundreds. We're kicking those out of the picture, but still hot in Texas up to the Great Lakes. Humid as well across the Southeast, warming up here across the East Coast. And then a punch of cooler air comes out of Canada with another system cools you back down into New England, but uh, still warm in the Southeast quadrant of the country and humid parts of the area too, 60s across the Northern Tier. Still mid 80s, but that will diminish as we go on out in toward the weekend here in the Pacific Northwest. And uh, no more hundreds for you all, at least for a day or two down here in the desert Southwest, except on a localized basis. And that's it for the rest of the week. Got your weather IQ coming straight ahead. Beyond that, weekend forecast, and we're going to take a look at those tropics. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, folks, hit that subscribe button right down below. Give the content a like. Turn those notifications on. I do a video every day, and you'll get notified when it is available. And if there's anything I can pray about, please put that in the comment section. Always let me know where you're commenting from. But certainly, most importantly, if there's any way I can support you, walk alongside of you during whatever difficult situation may be going on in your life, happy to do that. I pray for you all generically every day anyway, but if there's anything specific, please put it in there and we can pray about it together. Now, yesterday we talked about which city in the U.S. saw the least daylight hours around the winter solstice. Today, the opposite of that is going to occur in our question. During the winter solstice, which city in the lower 48 sees the most daylight hours? Houston, Texas? Key West, Florida, Miami, Florida, or Death Valley, California? If you know the answer, type it in the comment section. If you don't, just wait till the end of the show, and I will tell you the answer, and I'll tell you why. Now, I'm going to take a look at that weekend forecast, and then we're going to jump into the tropics with both feet. All right, we've got a lot going on in the show today, so we're just going to do a quick and dirty, high-level view of the weekend precipitation temperatures, just in case you got plans, you want to start thinking about that. 
uh, you know what to do. This is the European Ensemble precipitation total across all 51 members for the day uh, Saturday, so 8 a.m. Saturday, 8 a.m. Sunday. Okay, that's what we're showing here. And so the biggest footprint of rain in the greens where you really want to take this away will fall up here in this area and then over into the uh, parts of the Tennessee Valley and uh, upper mid-south here. That's where we're looking at the most rain across Florida as well and then punching into the Pacific Northwest through the daytime hours on Saturday. Won't well, rain it, 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 uh, up here in the Midwest, back into the Southern Plains will be where it rains the most in terms of the most portion of the day. Tennessee Valley will see rain move through, but it won't persist all day in Florida. It's just uh, sort of a you know, pop-up showers and thunderstorms through the daytime. Now, as we get on in toward Sunday, that area shifts to the east a bit up here in the Midwest, back into the Southern Plains again toward the mid-Mississippi Valley. Going to see more rain here and some heavy rain in spots too. So Sunday could be kind of a cloudy and drizzly, occasional showery day all in this area here and some more rain showers moving back in here intermittently so through the Intermountain West and the Four Corners region up here in the Northern Tier with energy pushing in the North west you'll see some rain there and across florida too everybody else for the most part looking good with an occasional scattered shower not out of the question temperature wise below normal on saturday for much of new england and the northeast which is great if you like fall across south florida and across the desert southwest too everybody else looking to get in on the above a normal action then on sunday warming up even more and uh, certainly could see some coastal areas up here in the northeast and mid-atlantic be below normal but most everybody else returning to normal or above normal conditions as we get on into Sunday. And that will ramp up as we go on into next week. We'll look at that another time. But right now, we're going to take a look at those tropics and see what's going on with Tropical Depression and number seven. And now we have it, folks. Tropical Depression number seven. There it is with that circle moving to the west at 13 miles per hour. And max sustained winds are 35 miles per hour per hour. We've been watching this for a long time and it's finally developed into a tropical depression, although it looks kind of ragged on the satellite picture, which I'll show you in a second. And then we have another tropical wave that has moved off the coast of Africa near the Cape Verde Islands, getting into an area that is marginally favorable. Not a lot of uh, conditions look to be coming together to make this thing develop, but uh, there's 20% chance of it. And I've got the information crawling across the bottom of the screen as I do every day, but uh, I'm not really excited about this one. And some of the modeling is losing its enthusiasm for this thing eventually developing. And we can take a look at why, but I'll show you that in a minute. So look, here is the satellite image and you can see Here's our tropical depression. It's kind of elongated. The center would be somewhere right in here. It's hard to define. And here's that next tropical wave coming off. Looks kind of paltry, doesn't it? At least it does to my eye. Not very well organized, not very big, not a lot of convection. Got a little bit more of convection moving into the northern islands here and pushing in toward uh, Puerto Rico. Going to see some convection around some of these islands up in here today in the US and uh, British Virgin Islands and Northern Antilles. And get up into the windwards and we get into uh, Cuba and over in toward Hispaniola and looking at uh, Cancun and back down here toward Central America looking at more convection there so going to see some heavy rain uh, here and there throughout the next couple of days taking a look at the European ensemble sometimes we do this for uh, the GFS too, but we're not going to show that today just because for the sake of time and it's redundant as well but uh, look, a couple things to notice very excited, very enthusiastic the European ensembles are for this big cluster here uh, for our tropical uh, depression now, which will soon be tropical storm a Gabrielle. But look back here. This is the other area to, to pay attention to and see what happens as we go on out in time. This is 72 hours. So this would be Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Monday, now Monday, we're starting to get close to Bermuda. Most of these ensemble members, most models curve this to the east of Bermuda just in time, but we're gonna have to watch it up here for uh, our friends in Bermuda. We're gonna really pay attention to this. Uh, you guys are built for hurricanes, but still, this is coming toward us. Probably, if it gets up into that area, probably a category one or two hurricane. So watch out, but most models recurve it at the last second or curve it, whatever you want to do. But guess what happens here in the European ensemble? We lose the signal for this next system out here as we get on out toward 10 days. We're not seeing anything else going on in terms of the European ensemble. Most other guidance is similar to this in terms of the initial track for the first system, but the GFS has a little bit more of a signal here, but uh, I don't know, folks. I'm going to show you something here in a minute that makes me think that might not even develop at all. Taking a look here at 
most of the hurricane models take this on off to the northwest eventually to the north and a quick curve back out to sea before it gets to Bermuda but again we're going to keep our eyes on it here in Bermuda and most model guidance keeps this at a tropical storm eventually getting uh, some of the model guidance brings it into hurricane category one or two status but that's really the, the extent of it it doesn't look like it's favorable out here in the Atlantic for rapid intensification into a big category four or five storm so not really looking at that in terms of being a on the table solution but uh, we'll keep our eyes on it as we do every single thing that's out here now uh, let's take a look here at one more map this is the tropical forcing background state and if you don't know where the Atlantic is where we're, where we're going to be watching I'm going to draw it for you here in pink this is the area that we're going to be watching okay greens indicate favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development and formation and maintenance and uh, reds indicate sinking air which is not favorable for tropical cyclones and we're here today and we're moving out through Thursday Friday Saturday so look what happens on Sunday Ooh, got some reds and uh, some oranges and deep oranges starting to show up eventually out here this is the European ensemble and uh, over time we get into next Wednesday and Thursday and things lighten up a little bit but largely remain unfavorable until we get way on it here toward two weeks and we kind of get a mixed signal so what does that tell us it tells us at least one factor is against tropical development after we get through the weekend and through the weekend the only thing we see out here on most guidance is tropical storm or hurricane gabrielle so after that boy oh boy the quietness just looks to continue out here in the atlantic which is great news now this is only one factor but it's not an insignificant factor all right so we're going to watch it we're going to watch all these waves out here every single day and i'll keep you posted on what's going on right now though we're going to watch up we're going to see what's going on with the sun all right it's coming up yeah here's the star folks and a couple of things to look at a couple of bright spots you see those bright spots those are sunspots Kind of ironic bright spots are sunspots and the black spots a coronal hole that'll be turning toward us over the next couple of days and we'll see if that affects the solar wind and maybe puts us back into geomagnetic storm conditions but all of these sunspots i'm not sure why the disc is white today folks but really all the sunspots that you see here all in green they're not all that complex they may be changing and morphing around so we're going to watch those as they do so but not really anything all that complex showing up here in terms of sunspots so no big risk of solar flares although again we have to keep our eyes on it no big earthquakes going off around the globe a couple of shakes still persisting up here in northern california off the oregon coast we're looking at that and just watching it intently to see if anything comes of it but nothing else going on in the meantime nothing going on on the volcano front so that uh, sort of leads us back in here to the weather iq answer doesn't it yeah it does unfortunately our time is almost up but got to get you that answer Here's the question though first. During the winter solstice, which US city in the lower 48, lower 48, sees the most daylight hours? And out of all of these four answers, the absolute correct answer is Key West, Florida. Has a daylight of 10 hours 33 minutes with a sunrise around 7.04 a.m. and a night. Uh, nighttime hours are thir total 13 hours and 27 minutes with the sunset around 5 37 p.m so which would you rather be what city would you rather be in during the winter key west or seattle or anywhere across the north or anywhere across the south really that's what happens the uh sun as it moves down toward the tropic of capricorn that's where it's at its uh in the winter solstice it's directly over the tropic of capricorn giving the northern areas the least amount of light and the farther south you go you pick up a little bit more daylight that's why key west has a little bit more daylight than does Seattle. So that's what you got, folks. Well, that's it for the weather today. One more thing to know about on this day in 1787, long time ago, delegates at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia signed the U.S. Const US Constitution creating the foundation of American government. That happened today in 1787. Now you know history, now you know the weather. As always, folks, this is Cold Rain reminding you the weather runs 24 7 but i got you covered 48 14 it's been good to be with you i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and i'll be back with you again tomorrow take care and have a great day